Welcome back to Midpoint. Senior fellow at the London Center for Policy Research, former Lieutenant Colonel in the U.S. Army, Tony Schaefer joins us once again here on the show. Lieutenant Colonel, let's get to some of the things that are happening overseas right now. The Ukrainians have accused the Russians of sending dozens. We're actually talking about 32 tanks, 16 D-30 howitzers, and 30 Kamaz heavy trucks across the border into Ukraine. The Russians call it unfounded and provocative. The BBC is still at this point trying to verify that it's happened. Wouldn't shock you, though, if indeed the tanks were rolling across the border, would it? No, not at all. I think it's very clear that Putin has not remotely been put off his game. And, and I, it's been announced the ruble has, has dropped to an all-time low to, compared to some other currencies. I don't think Putin really cares. What he's trying to do right now is, over time and without any resistance so far, reinsinuate the old Soviet empire. He's doing a very good job of it. And frankly, Ed, this is one of the things which I think cost President Obama in the midterms, in that uh, there's this total uh, feckless attitude, uh, a perception of weakness that he portrays on, on ISIS and, and especially on this. And as much as I think uh, he went to NATO for the summit uh, earlier this year in England and said the right things, no one believed him. And, and right now you see Putin continuing, and I believe you're gonna, we're going to see that these are uh, actually true movements of, of heavy weapons into Ukraine by, by Putin. I think we're going to continue to see Putin play his own game, trying to reinsinuate, uh, if not control, heavy influence over those states which are uh, on the border with Russia and those states which used to be part of the Warsaw Pact. Tony, it doesn't matter how much we talk about this. It seems that we are heading sooner or later to some sort of a military meeting, if you will, with Putin, almost that war, right. and you mentioned the ruble dropping as well. War is right. what he needs at this point in order to reestablish himself, put himself further in power, and also get the Russian people behind him. He wants it at this point. Absolutely. And this is where I've said on this program and others that we need to take a very strong hand with NATO right now to show that NATO is, it can come back and be the NATO it was during the Cold War. As much as I am not a, a neocon, I think I'm a very practical Reagan Republican on this sort of thing, Ed. I think we have to approach this like President Reagan would do, uh, with strength, uh, hoping that we never have to use it, but, but for goodness sake, show that if, if necessary, we will defend the equities both of the American people and of our allies, who clearly are um, essentially kind of over the barrel right now because Putin uh, has a great influence over them because of Gazprom and other uh, uh, economic relationships within Europe. We've got to do something. We've got to be uh, very clear in our resolve. And President Obama has not done any of that so far. Got about 90 seconds left. Here sure. we go with the latest from the Pentagon. More than 600 American service members since 2003. Reportedly, they were exposed to chemical warfare agents in Iraq. This right. changes entirely the scale, the cost of the U.S. encounters with all these abandoned chemical weapons here. And the Pentagon has been trying to keep this quiet. What do we draw from this? This has been going on for years, Ed, and it's shameful. I mean, a, a close friend of mine, Will, I, I don't want to get in his last name, but what, suffered from this, uh, from having had gone gone into Iraq and had to deal with sort of thing. It's, it is truly a travesty. And this is, let me be clear on this, this has gone through several uh, administrations. It's not simply an Obama administration failure. The Pentagon itself, as a bureaucracy, does not like to admit anything that it's, that it's uh, not comfortable with. And this is one of those things where, yes, during the uh, invasion of Iraq, there were small stores of, of chemicals found. Uh, we've known this. A lot of us have known this. I'm not, I've never quite understood why the White House, the Bush 43 White House, did not play this up. With that said, there's clear and compelling evidence that there were multiple exposures by our soldiers, and they're still suffering from it. So to me, this is something that if the, uh, the Obama White House really wanted to make good on something, they should jump into this. The Veterans Administration should jump into this and try to set this right. It's not too late to try to help those veterans who have been exposed to this and are suffering through it right now. Unfortunately, what you just said about the Veterans Administration helping the vets that are out there, I don't think anybody has a tremendous amount of faith that it will actually get done the way we work. It is a sad nope. thing to say. Yes, sir. Tony, it's always a pleasure to get a chance to talk to you, my Thank friend. You. Thanks so much. We'll do it again soon. Thanks, and have a good weekend. All right, you too. Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer joins us. And again, we're still trying to, and the BBC and many others are still trying to verify whether or not those tanks actually did roll across the border from Russia into Ukraine. The Ukrainians say it did. The Russians say it didn't. Here we go. All right, here we go. After the break, the Donald. And the one question that leads off every single interview with him. You'll hear it and a lot more when we continue on Midpoint.